You're watching Euronews Now. I'm Tukumbo Silako with your top stories. The French president is in Moscow this afternoon to meet his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin. Emmanuel Macron says a deal is in reach to end the crisis over Ukraine. Meanwhile, Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz is going to Washington to seek support over the country's stance on arms sales to Kiev. And to the victor, the spoils, Senegal's Taranga Lions write a new page in the record books with success in the Africa Cup of Nations. All eyes will be on French President Emmanuel Macron as he meets with Russia's President Vladimir Putin on Monday. The meeting comes as tensions between Moscow and the West increase. Macron says his visit will centre on dialogue and de-escalation. It follows Russian troop build-up at the border of Ukraine with around 130,000 soldiers. Joint military exercises will also begin this week with its ally Belarus. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz will meet US President Joe Biden on Monday, followed by visits to Ukraine and Russia in a separate bid to reach a resolution. I'm not going there to have a coffee. It's about making real, tough, important policies. This is a critical situation. I think we must always be clear about what we are promising, but rightly so. This is about preventing a war in Europe. That's the serious matter, and that is what I owe to the citizens of our country to whom I also feel responsible with regard to the European peace order and our allies. Schultz emphasized that the European NATO partners and the US would closely coordinate their actions. He also referred to Germany's engagement with NATO and Ukraine with German troops in Lithuania. The president of France is the first European leader who is set to meet in person with Vladimir Putin in an attempt to find a diplomatic solution uh, to de-escalate uh, the Ukraine crisis. In an interview to the Journal de Dimanche, uh, Emmanuel Macron uh, said that it was important to prevent the situation from worsening. He stressed that the integrity and security of Ukraine or of any other European nation could not be compromised. But he also said that it was legitimate for Russia to raise the issue of its security concerns. Vladimir Putin's spokesman uh, said that this visit will be very important and that the talks will focus on uh, Russia's uh, security guarantee demands to the US and NATO. Emmanuel Macron is in uh, close contact with Joe Biden. He spoke with him as well as with the Secretary General of NATO on Sunday over the phone. Some experts believe that Emmanuel Macron will try to figure out if there are any confidence-building measures that could become a bonus to American office in order to de-escalate the situation. On Tuesday, Emmanuel Macron will uh, travel to Kyiv and will meet with the President Vladimir Zelensky, but the efforts to stay on the path of the dialogue will continue as the new German Chancellor, who is today meeting with Joe Biden in Washington, is expected in Moscow on February 15th. Galina Palonska for Euronews. Germany's ambiguous stance on the Ukraine-Russia crisis may be explained by its energy dependence. The country imports more than 40% of the oil and 55% of the gas it consumes from Russia, an amount it hoped to increase significantly thanks to Nord Stream 2. The pipeline of more than 1,200 kilometers runs parallel to Nord Stream 1 and connects Russia and Germany through the Baltic Sea without passing through third countries. At a cost of more than 9 billion euros to build, the Russian state-owned company Gazprom, the main shareholder, has not yet received the legal permits to start operations. Failure to obtain them would be a financial blow to the Kremlin's coffers. Although Washington and Brussels have brandished the threat, Berlin is reluctant to paralyze the pipeline to put pressure on Moscow, as this year it plans to abandon nuclear energy and switch to natural gas in its transition to renewable energies. The German government's stance is also influenced by its past as an aggressor power. Since the end of World War II, Germany has refused to supply weapons to any party to a conflict, a principle it has violated on occasion. 
When in January, Germany offered to supply 5,000 military helmets to Ukraine to help it defend itself against a possible Russian invasion, it provoked outrage in some quarters, with Ukraine officials describing the offer as a joke. But Germany's defence minister, Christine Lembrecht, said sending arms to Ukraine would not be helpful as tensions are still ongoing. According to polls, six out of ten Germans agree with the decision not to send arms to Ukraine. However, many consider the Social Democratic Party to be too pro-Russia. The Social Democrats' good relations with Russia date back to the Cold War era and were maintained under former Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder, a member of the board of directors of Nord Stream 2, who has just been nominated to the board of directors of Gazprom. The crisis has generated tensions between the Social Democrats and their coalition partners. After Chancellor Olaf Scholz stated that the decision on Nord Stream 2 would be technical and not political, his foreign minister, the environmentalist Annalena Baerbock, assured the Bundestag that a Russian invasion of Ukraine would affect the pipeline. While in Germany the Social Democrats are sinking in the polls, placing them behind the conservative Christian Democratic Union, abroad it is confidence in the country that's at stake. Olaf Scholz remains committed to dialogue. After Monday's visit to Washington, he'll visit Kiev and Moscow early next week. In the meantime, there are questions, especially in Eastern Europe, as to whether Germany is a reliable partner in the biggest standoff between Russia and the West since the end of the Cold War. Hundreds marched in the Spanish capital on Sunday to protest against COVID-19 restrictions. The participants largely fell into two different groups, people against vaccination and those asking for more freedom to face the pandemic without government measures. The march ended in front of the parliament where crowds listened to songs and speeches. In the Netherlands, there was a similar sight in Rotterdam. Thousands were also out protesting COVID-19 government restrictions with the Together for the Netherlands movement. But unlike some previous gatherings in the city, Sunday's was peaceful. Many of the protesters said that they weren't against vaccination, just that they wanted things to go back to normal. And in Canada, protests against pandemic restrictions across the country entered their second week. What initially started as anger about vaccine requirements for truck drivers has now turned into larger concerns about health measures. Queen Elizabeth II has officially become the longest serving British monarch. Having reigned for seven decades, the 95 year old was kept busy earlier this week reviewing plans for her Platinum Jubilee celebrations in June. The Queen also marked the occasion, announcing her sincere wish for Camilla, the wife of her heir Prince Charles, to be crowned Queen Consort when the time comes, a statement that has generated mixed reactions from the public. So we maybe need a bit of a change now. We need to start to move on with the royal family. Uh, I think a change is maybe, hopefully, a good thing for us. Uh, the Queen is going to step down at some point, uh, and probably this year is maybe, maybe a... Um, a good time to do it, a suitable time. I'm delighted. I think it's high time that she made that decision. I'm delighted that she did. And we have to move on with the times. It's, it's way past worrying about the past. We've got to, we've got to go with what's right. And if no, anybody else, know, if anybody should know what the right thing to do is, she is. While the monarch renewed her lifelong pledge to continue her service, she urged the British people to give her son and Camilla the same support they have given her. The Duchess of Cornwall, now 74, was long vilified for her role in the breakup of Charles's marriage to the late Princess Diana. <laughs> Senegal fans celebrate at home in Dakar after their team defeated Egypt 4-2 on penalties at the Africa Cup of Nations final in Cameroon. It's the first time they've ever taken the title. After extra time ended, still with no score, it went to the drama of penalties. Hero Sadio Mane made up for a first-half penalty miss by converting the winning spot kick in the shootout. The match had been billed as a battle between Liverpool stars Mane of Senegal and Mohamed Salah of Egypt, but it never reached those heights, with both sides missing chances. 
while Senegal celebrate. And Mane is voted the tournament's best player and exhausted Egypt will return home after missing out on their bid to win a record-extending eighth African title. You're watching Euronews now. We'll be back in a few moments.